what do you do for late season weed control in soybeans? Here's just an example of an email I got the other day from an agronomist who said, um, hey, what do I do in extend soybeans? Uh, it's too late to spray dicamba. I can't spray Flexstar this late or I'll have carryover. They're Roundup resistant weeds. I can't use a product like Dual or Outlook because it's not going to kill the weeds are up. What do I do? Well, there's certainly a lot of options off the table. And when you use the term late season control, you may have soybeans that are a foot tall. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, what is he talking late season control? This is still early in this plant's life. It is, but we're running up against windows here with both the stage of growth that your soybeans are in and the calendar in some cases that don't allow us to use some of the best options that we had earlier in the season. But you well, still talk, have weeds. Yeah, but talking about those best options, that was the thing I asked this agronomist. How many modes of action did that farmer use pre-emerge? Well, when the answer was zero, that didn't make me very happy. Unfortunately, no, I but, talked to a lot of but farmers. But the answer is one, one or two, yes. and it's still sometimes not that much better yep. this time of year That's because right. they've run out of gas. You by now. need to use three. We just continue to, to talk about this time and time again. The three pre-program works. When you can get 99.9% .9 control on things like water hemp, palmer pigweed, kochia, lamb's quarters, all these tough Roundup resistant weeds, you have to do it because the post-emerge options after Roundup just aren't good. Well, and you can use three different pre-modes of action and then you can come back post-emerge, add another soil residual mode of action. If you save that group 15 for your post and don't use it up pre, now you've got four different modes of action you've put out there that all have residual in the soil because the easiest way to kill a pigweed is never to see it. Let the pre-emerge take it out before it even comes out of the ground. Once those pigweeds and some of these other tough weeds are up, well, they can grow so fast, especially at this time of year. If you get some moisture and you have plenty of heat, the weeds are growing so quickly that oftentimes they can get, if you're just scouting once a week, well, from one week to the next, you can come back to a clean field and find, oh no, I've got six inch tall weeds now. There's nothing I've got that can kill it. All right, so what can you do at this stage? Again, nothing great. But I would probably first think about Cobra. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to burn the beans, and I hate spraying that after the beans have started to flower. But after Cobra, all you're left with really is Cadet or maybe Ultra Blazer. So if we're talking water hemp, Cobra is absolutely the best thing. Cadet's not terrible, though. Ultra Blazer is certainly not real good. Those are all fine herbicides, they really are, but they're all designed to kill one or two inch weeds. They're designed to be out there in front of a problem, not as rescue products. I don't know any products that are really designed as, well, here's your rescue treatment. Uh, we used to think of Roundup as that way, but let's be fair, even when we were using Roundup as a rescue treatment, it's we're gonna have to use twice the rate or maybe even more to get a good job done on great big weeds. All right, in addition to that, could you use first rate this late if you had ragweed, for example? Well, you could. I mean, I'm slightly worried about carryover in high pH soils, uh, carryover to corn. Probably not a big issue. Uh, you could also use some pursuit if, let's say, you had nightshade or some weed that pursuit's good on, but unfortunately, there are a lot of ALS resistant weeds that pursuit is simply not going to control. I also worry about carryover in low pH and in areas of the country that are cold and dry. We've seen half rates of pursuit carryover in extreme drought conditions, even, so we really have to be careful with that one. So you can see where we're going with all this. It's like, okay, I got a moderately good option. I got a questionable option. I got a bunch of really terrible options. Unfortunately, that's about all you can do other than the one safe bet, the one sure thing that absolutely will kill the weed and not hurt the crop, and that's called manual labor. So if you wanna go back out there and pull weeds, just like Darren and I used to have to do when we were kids, that's certainly a viable option. Well, and here's the other thing too, Brian. If you say my late season weed escapes are, I've got five pig weeds out in a whole field, go out and pull those weeds. It makes no sense to drive equipment through the field or to hire an airplane for five weeds. Don't be afraid, get out there, get those weeds out of your fields. You don't want them to go to seed to create an even bigger problem for next year. Now, speaking of weeds, we've got our weed of the week. It's coming up next.